Pulavinaka, welcome to the Time Sports Show. We're here in uh, Lenga Lenga in Nandi at the Fijian Draw Base Camp and uh, what an opportunity it is to be here and uh, to speak up uh, more about the Super Rugby season that we've had and uh, that's coming up next year as well, the new season 2024. Uh, we have the CEO himself, uh, Mark Evans. Uh, Mark, thank you for your time. I thank you for speaking to the Fiji Times. Uh, we'll start with 2023. What an amazing year it has been for the Fijian Draw. Uh, quarterfinals, 16, 18 players in, uh, in the Flying Fijian squad to the World Cup. Uh, for you as the CEO, from the Fijian Brewer perspective, how, how did you see 2023 unfold? Yeah, we were, I suppose we, we hit most of our internal targets um, on and off the field. Um, we don't tend to sort of set a positional goal very often, playing might, but, um, but I think we were clearly made strides. Um, we're not the finished article yet, but we made strides, and uh, I we don't. You sort of forget the season once it's gone. To be honest, it seems a long time ago now, and we don't really spend a lot of time sort of thinking about it. Um, so we look. You're always looking forward. You want to try and improve. So that's the aim this year to be better again. You know, we were better in year two than year one. We're hoping to be better in year three than year two. And it isn't always quite as linear as that, but that's the aim. Um, I think the squad's a bit stronger, a bit more depth. Um, haven't lost many players. Uh, lost a couple, Kala and Joe, and wish them all the best. But I think we're we're probably stronger in depth. Blow to lose Caleb at the World Cup. He won't play much, I don't think, at all this Super Rugby season. He might, so he might just scrape in towards the end. But that that's a bit of a blow. But you know, we've we brought a lot of bo uh, six boys up from development. We brought in a couple of from externally, from uh, so Isaiah and Waka from from New Zealand, and Epeli and um, Junior um, from from France. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be uh, and 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 as you say, a lot of the players got a lot of some great experience at the World Cup, and we're a year older. Uh, and people forget this is really only our second proper pre-season. The first year was very late, and very patchy, and I've always believed, uh, you know, when I worked in the NRL, we used to say, you need three, three pre-seasons to get up to NRL standard physically, and I think that's, I think that's pretty similar. So, although a lot of the Fijian athletes get fitter quite quick and unfit quite quick as well. So, I think overall we'd be we think we're in a better place. We think we've got, certainly the bottom end of the squad is stronger, no question about that. So I think we ought to be able to, uh, we ought to be able to rotate a bit. Uh, and, you know, we've got some little targets that we want to try and achieve. You know, we need to improve our record away from home, which is not very good. Um, you know, we've got seven home games this year, which is, is an advantage. Um, and our travel schedule is probably not quite as arduous as it was last year. So, all in all, um, yeah, we're pretty optimistic. Mm. Talking about the players who have returned from the World Cup, uh, Fijian players are known to be very humble, soft-spoken. But seeing them now, I mean, at the World Cup, they've had two seasons with the Fijian Brewer, I guess, uh, Changes, changes are evident now, and uh, this, this will surely help them on the field. I think they're still pretty humble, uh, and I think they are. I think they're more confident. I think that's the biggest thing. I wouldn't say it's a, it's that they are getting ahead of themselves or that they're getting sort of believing their own publicity. I, I think they're still pretty humble. Um, but they, you, you like anything else um, in life, if you do something. For a longer period of time, you you do gain confidence. You get more relaxed. You get more um, yeah. It, it's just become slightly easier. I'm not going to say it's easy, but it becomes slightly easier. And I think the other thing, of course, it's another load of games where quite a number of them played together and over and above that, a lot of time together and a lot of training together. So 
you know, people forget that this team, when it was put together in year one um, for the 2022 season, was, was basically scrambled to put it together. And they never really, there was no, people in the game talk about cohesion a lot, by which they mean the advantage a team gets from playing a lot of team games together and a lot of, lot of training together. And I think that's the big advantage is that we've had two proper pre-seasons, we've had two seasons of Super Rugby, we've had another, a big group of our players away, you know, we started in late June all the way through to late October, that's a long time, it's a lot of trainings, a lot of games, played five before um, and five in the World Cup, so it's ten games. Now, it wasn't all Drew players by any means, but there were quite a number. Uh, so that, that all helps. And uh, I think we're probably nearly through the sort of, which I wasn't here, but people who were talk about it, that early on, I think the team were a little, a little overawed maybe by the opposition. And it was all new and we didn't play at home much. And you know, that was difficult. I think now, combination of last year and the World Cup and another pre-season, I think we're less overawed than we were. I think there's a, and there's, rightly so, there is a feeling that we belong in the competition and that we're not just happy to participate. You know, we want to be competitive. Uh, I think. We were competitive in most games last year. We won six. There were another two or three where you think, well, you know, maybe we could have done a little bit better there. And there were a few still, where, particularly away from home, where we blew out. And we want to try and... There, there's some of your targets. Improve away, get rid of the blowouts, win a few more close ones. Although we did win, and I keep saying this too, um, you know, you look at last year, six wins, yeah, great, but we beat the Crusaders in the last minute, we beat the Canes in the last minute, and to be honest, the two games against Moana, they were the better team, to be honest. So there's four. Those had all gone slightly the other way. We've won two, and everyone goes, that's a terrible season. Uh, sports like that, though, the margins are pretty small. They're, you know, they're, they're, you've got to beat some good teams. You've got to you're playing against teams who've been in this competition a long time. They've got to come back to cohesion. A lot of their players have been playing together for longer than ours. They're older. We've got a really young squad. We've got hardly anybody. Uh, we've got hardly anybody. We've got one or two now edging 26, 27, 28. And Masaki Doggy is, 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 in, is in his 30s. But other than that, very, very young. And that's very unusual. And that's... And it's going to take a little bit of time as well. Talking about the matches that we lost, I mean, though some, some scores blew well, but uh, you know, the games against the Chiefs, uh, the match against uh, the Brumbies, yeah. we, we were in it for we were, 60, and, 65 uh, and, minutes. And, and the Reds up at Suncor, I felt, probably ran away from it. Could have, could have, could have, would have, should have. I've not got a lot of time for that myself. But yeah, we were, we were in the game. And we were in the game in Canberra, and we were in the game in Waikato, uh, in, in Hamilton. And, you know, <coughs> those are the sorts of places, it's interesting, three of those are away from, they're all away from home, the ones I've mentioned. Um, yeah, but, that'll come with time. Um, and, you know, there was... We, we, we won six out of seven, uh, sorry, five out of six at home. But the, the sixth one, Auckland beat us, the Blues beat us comfortably, you know. It wasn't we played particularly badly on the day, we just scrummaged very well. And, um, you know, they, 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 they played a very sensible game against us. Um, but you like to think this year, we won't win every game, of course not nobody does but you want to be in every game you, you don't want you know we had a couple of shockers um, you know we were pretty average down in Dunedin against the Highlanders um, you know we were really disappointed by the playoff game I mean I know nobody goes to Christchurch 
very rare that you go to go and win in the playoff, but we weren't our best selves that that, that night. Um, we we sort of oh we played another game. We played really well at New South Wales, and then just made some silly errors when a game I think we were in. Um, we played poorly against the Force down at Adrian Perth. You know there were some games you look back and you know, that wasn't that was that wasn't very consistent. So. Consistency, more consistency, particularly away from home. Uh, be in every game is quite a good target. Uh, I quite like that one. Be in you know, into the last 20 minutes. Be in it. Uh, probably be quite a way ahead, but but at the very least, be in it. Finally, heading into 2024. I mean, of course, <coughs> it's, it's going to be a step ahead from uh, a step higher than 2023. We have the kids round uh, as well. Uh, talks about the kids round in 2024. So a whole lot more things for the fans to expect and of course expectations of uh, making it to the quarterfinals and beyond again in 2024. Yeah, well one thing I've learned about my time in Fiji is expectations are always pretty high and uh, uh, it's interesting, the bit I said about maybe in the early year or year one there was a lot of things going against us but also there was psychologically I think it was quite it took some adjusting to. I don't think the fans took any time to adjust at all. They they sort of like, yeah, we're going to win this. I mean, that's one of the great things about the Fijian crowds and fans is that they're very optimistic. But that does set the bar pretty high. Um, but I think we've got seven games, which is the most we've ever had, which is great. Um, I think we've got some teams who've never been to Fiji. So the Waratahs and the Force are coming for the first time. We, I'm sure we will get the Brumbies one day. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. So that's exciting, and we've got a we've got we'll we'll have some very interesting and exciting local talent making debut this year. I'm sure it always happens, but there's a there's a group of youngsters starting to emerge. I don't really want to highlight anybody in particular, but there's a very strong group coming through. You know the. It's been taken four or five boys from the under 20s last, last year. I thought did well in the World Cup on um, very little preparation. We've got a, another group of youngsters who you know, have been with us a little while now. We're starting to come through. You know, people like Mordecai Murray and Philip Basalala made their debuts last year, but I think there'll be a few more from that. And you, know, you can start to see the group grow and you can start to see the young players put pressure on the more established players. You know, and that's all for the good. All right, thank you so much for your time, Mark. Uh, and wish you all the best for uh, hopefully a great 2024 season for the Fiji and Brewer. Thanks very much. We'll Cheers. talk again maybe halfway before through the start the or halfway through the season. Again. All right. There Good you go. Cheers. From the man himself, Mark Evans, the CEO of the Fiji and Brewer. Till we meet again in some other day.